Hey folks and welcome back to the channel. Now it's been a little while since I've done any guides for Project Zomboid, so today I wanted to dive into one of my favourite ways to play. In this video we'll be covering the best ways to survive effectively whilst living life as a nomad, what items you should prioritise finding and hanging on to, and at the end we'll cover some good mods that can help set the scene for your playthrough whilst you live life on the road. If you find the guide useful or entertaining, do me a huge favour and drop the video a like or subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one. So first, a bit of context. What actually is a Nomad playthrough? Well, I'm sure it's something some players have attempted before, but for those that don't know, it basically revolves around you not having a place to settle down. You'll be living your life on the road, possibly making camp for a night or two, but otherwise you carry with you whatever fits in your vehicle and your backpack. That's all you have to your name. It's a great way to change the experience Project Zomboid has to offer by forcing yourself to keep moving. You'll always be faced with new challenges and more risks as you won't have time to clear out areas and get comfortable. Now first things first, we need a vehicle. To start with, this can be just about anything you can get your hands on that actually runs, but ideally we want something with a large amount of storage space. Or if you want the true experience, you can look for an RV. Philly Busters Use Cars mod adds these, and if you're looking for the easy road into this sort of playthrough, Monkey has a great mod that starts you in in a nomad scenario with an RV already spawned with you. Now, regardless of whether you choose to use these mods or find one yourself, your vehicle is going to be your noble steed in a nomad playthrough, and as such, it needs to be given some tender love and care to keep it in good shape. Now, personally, for playthroughs of this nature, I always like to make sure I start off with the right knowledge needed to repair my vehicle, and as such, I pick the mechanic occupation on game starts to give myself three levels in the mechanics skill, an XP bonus, and all of the knowledge needed for basic vehicle repairs. If you don't pick this class, keep in mind that you're going to need to level your mechanics, and keep an eye out for vehicle magazines to gain the necessary knowledge that's needed. As a bit of a tip, when it comes to levelling your mechanics, assuming you don't take the mechanic occupation, the best way to start levelling is just to remove and replace car headlights, batteries, and radios. All this requires is a screwdriver, and this can be done once per vehicle per day. Do this regularly with the mechanic book XP multiplier applied and you'll find yourself getting the first couple of levels in no time at all. Now the great thing about being on a nomad playthrough is that we'll be travelling through a lot of different areas rather than being confined to what's nearby to a chosen base. So whilst you're out and about, take a pen and an eraser with you, then mark down the locations of any vehicles that might have some parts worth scavenging, and of course any shops where vehicle parts might spawn. The same goes for gas stations too, as you'll need to visit them regularly. You never know when you might drive back through the area, and when you get into the higher levels with mechanics, all of the stuff you mark down is going to be useful to you for upgrading and maintaining your chosen vehicle. So that's mechanics, but what other skills do we want to put some time into? Well, as we're on a Nomad playthrough, I wouldn't recommend putting too much time into things like farming, since we're going to be on the move a lot, and won't have time to monitor our crops. That said, if you're looking for someone to stock up your food supply on the move, both fishing and foraging can be good choices here. Foraging is great for a light snack on the go, whereas fishing, if you make camp for the night in the right place, you can actually catch yourself a full-blown meal. Just remember that as we're moving around a lot, you won't be able to refrigerate your catch, well, at least not all of the time, so it's best to do some fishing and make a meal right away. I wouldn't put too much stock into carpentry in a playthrough like this one, but training up some metalworking can be incredibly useful for doing some bodywork on your vehicle and goes hand in hand with the mechanics skill. Anything else is personal preference really, but those mechanics and metalworking skills are key to success with this kind of setup. Let's assume that you you have the vehicle you want and possibly a trailer to go with it. We're going to need to start filling all that storage with useful items for your survival. Now, one of the biggest problems you're going to have on a playthrough of this nature is food preservation, especially if you like playing with loot 
important in extremely rare settings. Whilst we can of course find a generator and a fridge to bring around with us, that will only preserve food whilst you're camped out. Obviously, for that reason, we want to keep an eye out for any foodstuffs that can be stored without the need for a freezer or refrigerator. Canned goods, non-perishables, essentially. But on these kinds of runs, there's a couple of items to keep a lookout for to help you broaden your character's diet and make use of all that fresh food without a refrigerator. Now, by using a jar, a jar lid, and a bottle of vinegar, we can take any vegetable item and preserve them in said jar for later use. It doesn't last forever, but it does keep it fresh for longer than in normal circumstances and is a great way to keep vegetables usable on the go. Whether or not you decide to bring a generator around with you is up to you, but personally, I still choose to take one. The nice thing about larger items like these is that you can put them on the back seat of a vehicle, even if it's technically too big for the available storage space in that seat. Now, with that in mind, the back seats of your vehicle can hold a generator and perhaps a refrigerator for when you camp out for the night. Using your storage space effectively in a Nomad run is incredibly important, especially since we're going to be carrying around some larger items with us that will take up a lot of that available space. Where you can though, it's also worth making room for two things, both of which are another reason to require a generator. The first one is a radio. Whilst not a necessity, it is useful for giving you a heads up on upcoming weather conditions and the helicopter event if you have this enabled. The second is lighting, and personally, I like to use the standing construction style lights for this. They can be hooked up to a generator so won't rely on batteries, they can be repositioned to your liking and give off a sizable amount of directional light, making them perfect for the travelling nomad. Oh, and one final thing here before we move on, make sure to bring some gas cans. In a run like this, you are going to be using a lot more gas, so having a few full cans will be a big positive for you and means that you can spend more time out on the road before having to return to a gas station. Now, one of the other necessities that we'll need to keep an eye on, especially especially in single player, is your character's requirement for sleep. Ideally, we want to keep your character on a good sleep schedule, so whilst we do have the added benefit of being able to sleep in our vehicles for a quick roadside nap if we need to, where possible it's a good idea to try and find some locations that you can set up camp for a night or two whilst you scavenge the nearby area. We're not going to have the luxury of walls in a true nomad playthrough, so ideally we want to search for locations that are relatively remote, offering peace and quiet as a trade-off for the lack of physical protection. Where you can, try to pick areas with a fair bit of space around them in all directions, so you've got time to see any threats coming way in advance. As I briefly mentioned earlier, if you can set up near a natural water source as well, this will be an added bonus and allow you both a fresh food supply in the form of fish, and a place to clean yourself or gather water for purification. This brings me nicely to managing your water supply. My personal choice is to gather a few water bottles rather than just one that I might take with me in a normal run. These fit nicely into the glove box of most vehicles and are quick to grab when I need to take one or two on a scavenging run. Along those same lines, another large item we'll need to make room for here is to try and fit a water dispenser into your storage. You can find these in a lot of locations, but the best ones tend to be offices. A mod that I really like to use as well is the water dispenser mod by Konijima. It allows you to remove the large bottle from on top of water dispensers, making it easier to store some either at your base or in this instance, on the move in our vehicles. Now going back to managing your sleep schedule, I want to talk about the importance of the daylight hours. In a Nomad run, you don't really have the luxury of a base to hunker down for the night and just spend it reading books for XP, so it's even more important that we keep a good schedule and make the most of our time. Aside from that, driving at night can be a big risk, especially if you have to jump out of your vehicle for a bit to clear some roadside hazards. Find yourself a digital watch as soon as possible and stick to a good schedule of sleep with the help of the built-in alarm. I think I speak for many when I say I wish it were that easy in real life. Now, now, before this video comes to a close, I just want to touch on some mods that I haven't mentioned already, which can make Nomad playthroughs even better. One of the biggest mods for a playthrough like this that you absolutely have to try is the RV Interior mod, which I've already mentioned in a previous video I've done. This mod adds interior spaces to RVs, school buses, caravans, and trailers of certain types to allow you to make proper use of them. It's great for a run like this, as it still gives you a space to operate within and 
access to things like stoves or sinks that you would have when using RVs in a real situation. Another one that is a small quality of life improvement is the fuel side indicator mod, which pretty much does what it says on the tin and allows you to see which side of the vehicle your fuel cap is located on. This is shown on the vehicle HUD when in the driver's seat. Lastly, DIY engine parts and DIY vehicle parts are two great mods that allow players to construct their own vehicle parts using metalworking materials like scrap metal or metal sheets. Generally speaking, it's a brilliant mod for the avid mechanic and for nomad runs, it just makes sense. So that's it for me in this one folks, but as always, if there's anything I've missed or some cool mods you'd recommend for this style of playthrough, drop them in the comments. I always like to keep an eye open for new stuff and it's important to share these tips for the benefit of newer players. As always, a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters for backing the channel and playing on our whitelisted server. If you didn't catch it, the server actually had a blog post written about it by the development team recently, which was super cool. Huge thank you to you guys for making all of that possible and there is a link in the description if you want to join my supporters on Patreon. I'll see you all in the next one.